So my name is Rebecca Hiles. I'm a sex educator and dating coach called the Frisky Fairy. I'm based in Philly, but I do work all over the country. Um, from I'm going to LA next weekend. I'm here this weekend. I'll be back up in Philly at some point to sleep in my own bed. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what I usually do with people is I work with them um, through online dating and I help them create profiles that are their most authentic selves. In a lot of places, there's like, the idea of dating coaching is sort of like a pickup artist kind of thing. I don't do that. I don't deal with that nonsense. What I do is help people create their best selves and help people sort of navigate their way through dating in a way that is comfortable, safe, and enjoyable for everyone so nobody's walking home feeling like their self-esteem has been attacked. So this is basically online dating in a nutshell. <laughs> you show up and there's just dicks all over your face. Oh, let me get started here. Is anybody here under the age of 18? Then you need to leave. <laughs> um, if anybody here is opposed to crass, tasteless language, that's fine. It's fine. You're all right. This is your notice, officially. <laughs> you don't need to ask. I'll provide it willingly. <laughs> So, <laughs> so one of the uh, one of the things that happens right now recently, we've we've gotten really into online dating. We've got Tinder, we've got OkCupid, we've got look, they've got like a site for anybody. You pick like a dynamic, they've got sites for it. Um, one of my favorites is Soul Geek. I don't know if anybody here is familiar with Soul Geek. Um, it's actually like a really it's tiny, tiny, tiny site. User interface is god awful, but. It's actually really nice <laughs> in a lot of ways. The, the services it offers, the way that you can connect with people, it's a really, really wonderful site to use. Um, but realistically speaking, we have a lot of this um, idea because we all live online now and everybody's online. Hmm? How's it spelled? Soul Geek, S-O-U-L-G-E-E-K. Yes. It, it like you're soul geek. Okay. Like a you know, I just sort of smush my words together. It's fine. <laughs> um, so in this age that we live in, we have this idea that, you know, you update your profile when you want to feel better, when you want to feel more attractive, when you want to feel sexy, you take that fucking selfie and you put it up online. You get all those likes, you get that validation. That is awesome. You should do that. That is great. It is, however, for a lot of people really frustrating when they sort of can't identify how to put their best foot forward. So here are some quick and dirty profile tips. Bet y'all can't see this. <laughs> it's okay, I'ma read it for you. Um, so the first thing that you should do with your profile is to add some suggestions to you, your profile so that you can give people something to talk about, right? Because nothing is worse than you roll up on a profile and you're like, oh, this person's really cute and they're like really interesting. What do I wanna message them about? Oh, your interest is film and beer and you went to school doing some non-specific, <laughs> what do I message you about? Like what, what information have you given me there to message about? Or the opposite is that they give you so much information that you have no idea where the hell to start. So one of the things that I like to suggest for people is, you know, ask me why I'm ashamed or why I, uh, what's my favorite guilty pleasure music, right? For me, it's Taylor Swift. I'm like not even ashamed to admit that Taylor Swift is, it's my life. Um, <laughs> And you know, like I really like um, because I just moved to Philly. Now any of my online profile, online dating profiles, always say things like, "If you know any sweet spots around, you know, South Philly, I'm really looking to explore the area." That is a great way for people to look at you and go, "Huh, this person seems interesting. I would like to talk to them." Oh, look, I have a thing to talk to them about. Right. <laughs> Popular. Uh, keep it positive. Spin your sad shit into happy shit. <laughs> it's hard though, it's hard though. I, um, I'm going through a divorce right now, which is a bummer, it's a huge bummer. But I'm moving to Philly, I'm going back to school. So I can say something to the effect of, you know, I'm going through a lot of really impacting, uh, impactful life changes right now, um, including moving up to Philly and uh, going back to school for social work. And so you have that thing where you're talking and you're saying, yeah, there's some shit going on in my life, but you're not sitting there going, oh, well, I'm in the middle of a divorce and everything sucks and money is tight and I'm miserable and I'm just looking for an excuse to put on people clothes and not pajamas. 
let's be honest though, if you're getting to that point, you're not wearing pajamas. <laughs> you're just fucking naked in bed. Just let it go. <laughs> um, you can offer suggestions as to what you're looking for. This one is really great for people who maybe don't want to put a lot of things in their profile. Um, I like to put this one in because I don't like putting casual sex in my profile, and you'll see why later. I will show you. Don't worry. In fact, I'm pretty sure that a solid portion of this audience knows exactly why I do not want to put casual sex as a want in my dating profile. Yes? Yes. I see some nods, yes. Um, so you could say, you know, and this is actually what I have in there, right? Uh, I'm seeking a regular casual sex partner who also enjoys beer and snuggles. You should probably like cats if you end up staying at my place. I have a cat. He's perfect. Um, but that's, he is, basically. He is. He's a, he's a hybrid. Um, <laughs> But that's the sort of thing that you want to add in there is what are you looking for? What are the specifics of you looking for? Are you looking for a casual sex partner that's just like a, I call you at 2 o'clock in the morning when I stumble home drunk and I want to get laid? Like, is that what you're looking for? Put that in there. <laughs> are you looking for, like, a long-time partner who, you know, would maybe be interested in moving towards a very serious relationship? Put that in there. Because when you don't put that in there, you get all sorts of messages from people and you spend all this time investing in like conversations with folks that don't pan out, which can be really frustrating for everyone involved. So yes, doing something like that is gonna like scale down your dating pool a little bit. However, it's gonna meet you, it's gonna get you to the right people rather than just all the people. <laughs> uh, next up, make sure you have an updated list of your likes and dislikes. And hell's bells do not lie about your interests. I'm serious. It is stupid. It is stupid. But nobody gives a shit whether or not you read The Infinite Jest. They don't. And if they do, you can have a conversation about it. Oh, I see that you read The Infinite Jest. Uh, you know, I actually didn't get around to it, but, you know, do you enjoy it? Can you, can you give me, like, a little bit about what it's about? Right? You can have these conversations. You can... I don't like the idea of spinning a conversation, but we'll go with that. Um, to turn a conversation in such a way that it benefits you uh, and benefits what you're trying to do, it's politics. If you're good at politics, you'll probably be good at this. <laughs> One of the most important things uh, with all of this is to, when you're talking about yourself in your profile, be positive. Be charismatic, be charming, be confident in yourself, and be positive about yourself. Because when you start putting conversations in there, when you start dropping words like, um, you know, like you're unfulfilled or unhappy or you, um, you know, you've gained a lot of weight, you're not feeling great about it. When you, when you have these tones in your profiles that idealize that you are unhappy about yourself somehow, that you are unhappy with the state, people get in, they read that. They read that and they know that. And so when you write things about yourself, just make sure to sound positive. Make sure to play up your strengths. Nobody wants to sit there and hear about the fact that you're like not confident and you don't really feel very smart sometimes. No, they want to hear about the fact that you are badass at this particular video game or you really enjoy this particular video game. Mine is Binding of Isaac. I'm garbage at it, but it's so much fun. <laughs> Literally, I've only beat mom once. Like basically. Um, so just make sure that you're, you know, you're playing up your best features, right? Speaking of playing up your best features, there should be five photos on any of your dating profiles. Five, at least. You can put more. I love it when you put more. Five at least. The first one should be a shot of your face. Take a selfie, get your face in the frame. We want it. <laughs> um, for everybody who's taking pictures of the slides, if you want the slides, I have cards on the table, so you can just email me, and I will send you a copy of the slides afterwards so that you don't have to like keep zooming and write. <laughs> um, no problem. Uh, so you want to put a shot of your sparkling smile, brush off your selfie stick, get your face up there. Like That's what you need to do. You need to make sure that you have your face up there. It needs to be a good picture of your face. Why? Because then people see your face, and they go, oh, hey. That is the person that I'm meeting from the internet and not some weird stranger who I'm pretty sure is going to kill me in the Starbucks bathroom later. It, it is bad. Um, the next one is a full body shot. 
everyone needs a full body shot. Everyone needs a full body shot. I'm going to say it again because everyone needs a full body shot. Here's the reason for that. When you put your body online and you just put your face, right, just your face, people immediately assume when they can't see anything else about you but your face that you're hiding something about your body. It doesn't matter whether you are or not. They make that assumption and they're less likely to talk to you because of it. So get your whole body in there. Uh, get a photo of you and your friends. Make sure you have their permission because nothing is worse than when you see like one person on the internet and they've got like five photos of their face all against like a white backdrop and you're sitting there, it's like different angles and like clearly different times of day, but you're like, that motherfucker's a serial killer. <laughs> Not you, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to indicate that you were a serial killer. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> But getting a photo of your friends with your friends, it makes you seem a little less, you know, <laughs> it makes you seem a little less, like, scary. Yeah, it makes you seem that you have people, that you like to be around people. Exactly. Um, show off your hobbies. Get a photo of you having fun. Really, anything fun. Playing board games. Uh, may I suggest if you can get candid photos of your cosplays or board game playings this week, and that's a really great photo to use of, like, showing off you playing, with, like, your hobbies. Anyway, it's just a suggestion. Um, and lastly, show off your skills. Uh, get a picture of you doing something that you're good at. I don't care. <laughs> I heard the thought. I heard it. I don't know who started it, but I heard it just go through the room. That's not what I meant, and you know it. Something like if you build your cosplays, get yourself in there. Take a photo of like you crafting, you building things. If you're like really good at driving, I don't know, take a photo on your car. Do something, take a photo of something that you are good at. That you are good at, that you have fun doing. One with your friends, one of your full body, one of your face. Five photos, everybody needs them. Got it? <laughs> I mean, you could like, if you wanna do something with a banana, just like put a banana like next to some baking ingredients and like selfie yourself with the, the baking ingredients. I don't know, make a banana pie of some sort. I have no idea. <laughs> selfie. So we're about to talk about how to take a good selfie. How many people here are good at taking selfies? Show of hands. A selfie is a photo of yourself taken by yourself. Got it? Cool. <laughs> uh, so everybody has a side that they like better on their face. And if you don't, then you can like flip on either side. Um, did, did you have a question? <laughs> Causing problems. <laughs> All right, so um, everybody has a side of their face that they like better, and if you don't, then you can play with either side until you find a side that you like better, and that's cool too. Um, you can also, uh, you also wanna check your surroundings. Do not take a selfie in a bathroom that is dirty. Uh, do not take a photo of a bedroom that is dirty. Do not take a photo at a place where you think you look real good, but like the people behind you like don't want to be in the photo, like, I don't know, at a funeral. Um, and make sure that no other faces are in the background. The best types of selfie will get you like outside um, or like in some sort of like pretty backdrop. Um, and like you can do selfies at cons like this, something that is like big um, and has a lot of space to it. But I wouldn't recommend, like I said, at a funeral in Target. Don't use your selfie in Target. Like, you know, turn around and at least get like the clothes behind you instead of a person, right? Um, make sure your face is in the frame. Gotta have your face in the frame for a selfie. Otherwise, it's just like a shouldery. Use lighting to your advantage. Um, find out which way the light makes you look best. I'm gonna show you a couple of different like images 
next of me taking selfies because I don't know it felt like fun that day um, to give you an idea of like lighting and shadows and so forth and you want to make sure that you're using that light to your advantage uh, sometimes you can take a photo from an angle and the lighting looks beautiful in this room but I wouldn't take a photo in this room like this why because the shadows are going to make me look like I have no eyes I'm going to look like a skull that's no fun for anybody except me it's hilarious but <laughs> That's fair. That is accurate. There's probably a site for that somewhere. <laughs> uh, use angles to your advantage. Um, angles can make or break a selfie. You know, you want to use it to emphasize your cheekbones, the shape of your lips, the shape of your jaw, the shape of your nose, your like eyebrows, anything like that. Use the angles. Use the lighting to emphasize all of that. If you can't do it, some people, I know <laughs> there's a lot of people that like, they just can't get the right angle. They don't have like long arms. They've got like shorter arms. Just suck it up and get a selfie stick. They're actually quite useful, frankly. I made fun of them for a long ass time and then I got one and I was like, damn, this is great. <laughs> if you like taking pictures of your bum, it was like really great for that. No? Oh, I see some people. There we go. I saw you. I saw you all. Or other parts, naturally. Okay, so um, I do really well on this one, obviously, on the left here. But I don't do well on like a straight on with no angle. That doesn't really work for me. Um, these are all taken at the same time of day in the same location on my bed. Um, so I don't do really well with the, the straight on. I don't like the way I look when I like take the camera like upwards. I don't like the way I look when I take the camera like specifically downwards because that looks pretty inappropriate. Um, <laughs> all I got for that but I do like the one on the end because that's my like standard selfie face I like emphasize my cheekbones um, that sort of thing you get like a really nice like curve on my face I'm into that that's my selfie face find your selfie face I task you all to do that tonight I don't care take there's a reason why people take like 20 30 selfies to find the right one you got to find your selfie face find it own it love it haha <laughs> Okay, so one of the things that I hear about all the time is, I don't know how to send a message. How do, how do I send a message? Well, it's actually quite easy to send a message. It's just all about like identifying. You know how in um, in like school you get taught to like make the like papers, and it's like um, it's like strong argument, weakest argument, and then like another strong argument to close it out. Nobody? Yes. Okay. All right. It's a lot like this. <laughs> You just have to identify where the parts are. Uh, so the first thing is that you want to identify at least one thing you liked about their profile. Why the hell are you messaging them? And if you're about to say, well, I'm messaging them because you're hot, take a look at their profile and try again. <laughs> the second thing is to ask them a question about it, about that thing that you liked. Um, identify something that you have in common. Give them something to reply to around like two questions or so and then give them your name or a name or an initial I don't really fucking care what you call yourself just give them something to call you right because otherwise you eventually get all the way to the point that you're texting each other and then you're halfway to a date and you're like shit I have no idea what this person's name is <laughs> and then you have to have that awkward conversation of um I don't think I ever asked you your name that's like really weird what's your name again <laughs> so uh, in this instance it was I'm also a big fan of social justice what's your biggest cause to champion right like the um, profile like the question I also noticed that you have a fondness for Taylor Swift however problematic she may be I'm also a fellow Swifty identify something you have in common did you see Beyonce at the VMAs wasn't that shit amazing since you're a Beyonce fan check out the performance for freedom at the BET Awards Becca right that is not the perfect message, but it is about where things should start. It gives you enough to play off of and enough for them to respond to because then they can turn around and say, oh yeah, I'm a really big fan of, you know, I champion a lot for Planned Parenthood and, uh, you know, what's your favorite Taylor Swift album? Like, I'm really digging the idea of, or I'm loving this like weird gothy look she's got going on right now. <laughs> and I did see Beyonce at the VMAs and it was freaking incredible. And I saw that Beyonce and Kendrick like freedom performance at the BET Awards and I am in love with it, right? 
and then you can go from there. That's how you start a conversation. That's how you get from point A to point B. It gives them something to reply to, but you also want to make sure that it's not, don't write a novel, write like a short pamphlet. We don't want a text message and we don't want a novel. We want a short pamphlet. get it but you're wrong and I hate you I love this gif by the way I've been holding this gif for a while and I've been waiting to use it and then it happened and I was like this is amazing <laughs> some quick notes about messaging people there's a lot of caps in here do not threaten bully or neg an individual everybody know what negging is no, no? negging is when you uh, sort of give a compliment with the intent of breaking down someone's self-esteem. So something along the lines of, you know, um, I'll give one that I heard my, myself. You know, usually girls your size don't look great in that sort of dress, but you really like, you really pull it off. And I'm like, excuse me, go fuck yourself. Thank you. But not everybody does that. <laughs> I have the added bonus of a lot of experience of doing this sort of thing. Um, do not neg an individual, that's mean. That's mean. Just because you break down somebody's self-esteem does not mean that they're gonna wanna fuck you. Well, a pickup artist, that's about rule number one. Find people with self-esteem issues and try to make them Oh, for yeah, yeah. That's why I don't deal with that shit. The thing is, is that, it, nah, it doesn't work. <laughs> Psychologically speaking, it actually does not work. I have a lot of feelings about pickup artists. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of, did you say they're dumb? Cause dumb is not, let's go a little bit further end of the language spectrum there. Oh, I like insidious. Um, do not send naked photos without express consent. You want to know what nobody wants? A surprise dick pic. Nobody wants to see your dick. Nobody wants to be that girl getting hot dogs thrown in her face. Sorry, <laughs> just don't do it. Don't send unsolicited naked photos. Um, do not respond to a rejection with an insult. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it sucks. Take Taylor Swift's advice and just shake it off. It's stuck in your heads now. You're welcome. Um, but don't make somebody feel like shit if they're not interested in you. One of the greatest things that I ever heard from a friend of mine was the uh, phrase, rejection makes space for the right people in our lives. If somebody rejects you, it's not because they think anything negative about you. Oh, it might be. Who the fuck cares? They're not important. What's important are the people that you are going to find that belong in your life. Do not start off with sexual comments unless their profile explicitly states that it's wanted. Even then, do not start off with sexual comments. The only time that you should start off with a sexual comment is if after reading the whole profile, you note that the, at the very end of the profile it says, if you don't message me with a really, really explicit message, I'm not going to reply to you. Unless that's there, don't send a fucking explicit comment. That's ridiculous. It's rude. It's rude. That's what it is. It's rude. Pay attention to social cues online. Now, social cues in person are really, really hard. It's hard to read social cues a lot. I have a lot of issues with it. I know a lot of other people have issues with it. Reading cues online also not the easiest because you're limited to whatever is on a screen and you could be feeling really bad about yourself that day you could be like unhappy with yourself and then you just see k and you're like well fuck you too and they're like in a perfectly fine mood they never there was nothing behind that it was just the letter k and you were just so upset that you put your own tone into it right it's hard but pay attention to the cues if somebody stops responding don't keep messaging them one, one reply, if somebody stops responding like a week or so goes by, if you like, you know, send them a message of like, hey, you know, I just wanted to know that I was, uh, I saw this, I don't know, thing about Beyonce and it made me think of you. I was wondering if you wanted to see the link for it, right? And that's it. They don't respond, let it go. Who knows what happened? Maybe somebody died. Maybe they died. Maybe they had a baby. Maybe they got into a car crash. Maybe their life exploded into failure and they don't have time to look at some fucking dating site right now. Maybe they joined a nunnery. I don't know. I have no idea what happened to make them not respond. But don't, 
<laughs> maybe they won a grand trip to Beyonce and then decided to work in her house for the rest of their lives, but they signed a non-disclosure and they can't have cell phones anymore. Who knows? Um, <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> but if somebody, it, don't continue to pester them with, hey, hey, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Hey, what's up? Right. Pay attention to me, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. That's what that reads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if someone is all one word answers, perhaps, just perhaps, consider that they're only being polite and that they are not interested. If you are sending lovely paragraphs or even like one or two sentence questions and they're not answering, one of two things needs to happen. Either one, you need to stop asking yes or no questions. Or two, you need to stop messaging them because they do not give a shit about you. I mean, it depends on who you're reading it as. Have a good night can also be like a really positive thing. Have a good night. I say it all the time. But then there's something like, oh, have a good night. Goodbye. I do that too. <laughs> Bye, Felicia, yeah. Um, so I would like to read to you some poetry from OK Cupid. Ready? <laughs> hey, my black roommate said you're sexy, and I would have to agree with him. Haha. <laughs> His pics are on mine as well, smiley face. I was really bummed about that one, that message, because like, they were really hot. And I was like, sure, I'd message back, like whatever. But then they just went and said this nonsense. Mm. Um, I'd love to lick you everywhere, baby. Oh, there's a lol at the end of that. By the way, just, <laughs> right. <laughs> I love to look you everywhere, baby, lol. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, okay. My favorite one, and one that, had, that I put on blast on Facebook, I just ripped this fellow a new one. I don't have the reply saved, which is unfortunate because it's a fun read. Uh, if you want to read that, grab my card, email me, and I'll send that to you. It's fun. Um, here's my favorite explicit poetry that I've gotten off of OkCupid. Okay How rough do you like it? Do you like it when a cock is forced down your throat and it forces you to gag and tear up? Yeah. Not even. I would settle for some iambic pentameter, like really. Those are the kinds of messages that people get on these sites. Specifically, women uh, and trans women get on these sites. They get really sexually explicit and appropriate messages. Now, on the other hand of that, guys, don't really get as many messages. It's unfortunate, but like, when we're getting messages like that out of the blue, do you really think that women are gonna wanna message you when there's like a solid chance that you might respond back with something really explicit or really cruel? Yes. No, no, no. No, do not put that. You want to know why? That should be, exactly, that should be the assumption. It should be assumed that you are a decent human being. No, it doesn't, it isn't the assumption, but at the same time, when you put it in there, it seems a little, <sighs> right, it feels like you're like putting on your fedora and you're like, you know, putting out, like rolling out the carpet and the red roses and, <laughs> And you're doing all the like, my lady, I'm like doing all of these great things. It sounds like um, friendship coins. Yes, yes. Stop applauding yourself for being decent. That was lovely. I don't know what you're dressed as. <laughs> the mermaid. The mermaid says the right thing, which is stop applauding yourself for being decent. You do not deserve a trophy for meeting the bare minimum of human decency. All right, so getting off the site. Getting off the site should be the primary goal. This is not to say going on a date is the primary goal. No, 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 no. Going on a date is like the far goal. Going to the date is your Yale. Getting off the site is your like no, not a tech, like your state school. Getting off the site is a state, a state school. Um, 579, that's a rule that I like to put into place. If you are sending decent like messages back and forth, like a paragraph or two at least, back and forth with somebody, 
either the fifth exchange, the seventh exchange, or the ninth exchange, you should be trying to get off the site. After that, your chances of moving from talking on a site or on a messenger, um, the chances of moving out of that drop, like drastic drop. You always wanna leave getting off the site open-ended. Do not trap someone into feeling like they are forced to give you their number, like they're forced to like exchange information with you. So you always wanna leave it open-ended and like leave a space for rejection. Um, and always, always, always politely accept the rejection if it comes, okay? One of the great ways um, that I use is, you know, I was wondering if maybe you'd be interested in moving off the site to like text or Facebook or, or whatever. Um, here's my number. If you're interested, awesome. If not, no pressure, we can keep talking here, right? That gives somebody the space to say, you know what, I'm not really ready to move off the site right now. Let's continue talking here until I'm a bit more comfortable. And you say, cool, no problem. And you keep talking there. <laughs> you know, I would read the caption for this, but I'm afraid that some people would take it inappropriately. <laughs> how to ask someone out <laughs> how many people have trouble with this one y'all are not good at raising your hands it's shameful it's shameful you're tired that's what it is you're tired and you're hung over I see it I see it in all y'all uh, so you want to have the sort of who, what, where, when. Do not ask why. Asking why makes you sound, uh, answering a why makes you sound whiny, right? So you don't want to say, um, so for instance, hey, I was wondering if you were free this week to go with me, who, to this swanky board game bar that I found in the city, what and where. I'm open Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday after 7, when any chance you'd want to join me. Do not include a why, because a why turns into a, yeah, you should really come with me because, you know, I'm not, I'm like a really nice guy. I'm a really nice guy. And like, I would just, I would, you know, I'm happy to treat. And like, it just becomes this point of like, whiny. it's whiny, it's whiny. And when you take a step back from that and you take a look at that sort of thing, you may think that you're doing a nice thing. You may think that you're saying a nice thing. And in some aspects, that's absolutely correct. But what ends up happening is you, the person who's like, giving all of these reasons why this person should go out on a date with you ends up getting shafted because you get to that date and if they're not into it you're feeling like you should have gotten more that you've worked hard enough to get more from that date and also if it, it can lead to a balance of power an imbalance of power um, in a relationship that leads to resentment on both sides somebody feels coerced into going on a date somebody feels like they're entitled to more because they put in more effort to get the date and it becomes just a really um, questionable turn of events keep it short sweet and to the point uh, don't be overly aggressive and don't be overly nervous either right um, this is a very simple way to do this it's very simple there's no aggression to it um, it's you know would you like this it's not nervous it's not a oh you know I was wondering if maybe um, if you're, you know, only if you're interested, of course, because I, like, I know that you're probably really busy, Like you don't want to deal with any of that. You want to keep it, like, very cordial, very, you know, sweet and to the point. Um, and you want to keep it really light and really in a space where somebody says, ah, oh, you know what, I'm actually not free this week. And then you can say, okay, do you have any time coming up in the next couple weeks? And if they say no, you say, bummer. And you keep talking until either the time comes up or they eventually slow fade out. That's just the way it goes. One of the things that I like to note about online dating is that um, for every 10 messages you send out, right, you can assume to receive somewhere around two replies. Of those two replies, one of them will get off the site. That doesn't mean that they'll necessarily meet in person, but they will get off of Tumblr, Tumblr, Tinder, or <laughs> OkCupid, or like whatever, whatever, plenty of fish, whatever. <laughs> I'm not biased at all. Um, whatever like dating app you're using, uh, that's how they'll get that's how they'll get off of it. So just keep in mind that for every 10 messages you send out, you've only got like a 
10% chance of talking to somebody off the site. So when you go and get discouraged, sit there and sort of think, how many messages am I sending out? When you take a look at their profiles, how many messages are you sending out to people who are looking for you, for your type of person, for somebody who has the same interests, for somebody who has the same wants, for somebody who has the same like backgrounds and ideals that would match with yours? Because I'm gonna be real honest, I will never reply to a Republican. Sorry. Not sorry. So you got rejected. Here are some things to do when you get rejected. Go snuggle a pet. If you don't have a pet, stop by an animal shelter or snuggle with a stuffed animal. Go watch a movie, start a new show. There's like a whole bunch of new shit on Netflix. I'm sure you can find something. Uh, take a bath or a shower, use like fancy body wash or go to Lush and buy yourself like a colorful bath bomb. I love those things. <laughs> I, you know, I can make showers exciting very often. Uh, go visit a friend or a call or text or video call. I don't fucking care. Just go talk to a friend. Um, have a drink. Pick up a new beer, fancy wine, drink some tea or hot chocolate. Go sleep it off with a pair of fuzzy pajamas or nothing at all. I don't care. Um, read a book. May I suggest the entirety of the free Kindle collection? Um, <laughs> move your body. Go for a run or a walk or a lift or a dance or a... I don't know, pick something up and put it down. I don't vacuum your house. Do something, right? Ride a bike. Yeah. Go catch some Pokemon. Damn. Uh, this comic is unfair. Why do you assume the only people who arrest are men? Because I pay attention. Um, that's, there are a lot of times when men get you know, really inappropriate messages as well, but they're never quite as explicit or violent in a lot of ways, or sexually aggressive and sexually violent in a lot of ways, as the ones that women and trans women do. Um, if you get rejected, and you're angry, and you're upset, and you're hurt, and you want to lash out at that person, maybe just take a moment to consider why you feel as though someone deserves to be insulted for voicing their disinterest. They're a human being. They're allowed to voice their disinterest. They're allowed to say, no, no, I'm not interested in you. And it's important to remember that we actually live in a world, in a place where women and people are regularly stabbed and killed and harmed for rejecting other people, specifically men. It's specifically women and trans women that are killed for rejecting men. And that's really scary. So when you think that you're gonna send that nasty ass message because that girl that you wrote this night sweet message to was like, no, I don't think so, and you wanna call her a fat slut and you wanna talk about how you wanna do all these terrible things to her and terrify her at night, maybe just take a minute to have a second and like chill the fuck out. This is my favorite. Uh, gift to use all the time, which is, hey, are you going to murder me because you're a stranger I met on the internet? Uh, fun fact, I drove down here with a stranger I met on the internet, and I'm spending, like, my hotel room is with strangers I met on the internet. I know one person at this entire fucking con. Uh, and now I know everyone. <laughs> um, so please don't murder me. But I didn't meet any of you on the internet. I mean, there's probably a couple people in here that I met on the internet, but preferably don't murder me. Actively, like, real talk though, I would be the worst person to murder because if I go more than like two hours without posting somebody, people are already like, Becca, are you alive? Do I need to call the cops? I'm fine. <laughs> Don't be a stupid serial killer, God. Safety first. Um, we always talk a lot about safety, online dating, that's a, that sort of thing. I don't think, with the exception of alternative communities, let's put aside polyamory, kink, that sort of thing, and just focus on like, monogamous, likely heteronormative, but okay, dating. Um, when it comes to safety, there's, hmm? I'm just looking for I will, I'm gonna get there, I promise. <laughs> um, when it comes to safety online, you're not as likely, you can put your fucking face on your profile. <laughs> Like, you can do that. You can do that. On a dating profile, you can do that. You are not, it is not a problem for somebody to be dating online um, in just about any job that I have ever encountered. 
there's never been a problem with that. So if you put on there that, oh, you know, I don't put my face on there because of privacy concerns, uh, I'm gonna need you to knock that shit off because that's like really creepy. <laughs> and it's highly unlikely that you're gonna get any responses that way. Um, Pick a username. If you're if you're trying to keep yourself as far like off the grid as possible, this also goes for the poly people, um, because you can for poly people, non-monogamous people. I still think you should put your Facebook photos on there, because you can do other things to protect yourself from it. Um, so it's sort of a it's sort of a mixed bag of like your comfort level. Uh, I don't know anybody that's in my poly circles, and they are vast up and down the East Coast. Um, I, yeah, I don't know anybody, and I know a lot of teachers, I know a lot of people in, like, precarious, that they've been poly and online, and they've, like, kept things pretty solidly private, and they had their faces up there, they've never had an issue. So, um, if you're looking for safety, if you're looking for privacy, pick a username that's different from your other usual, usual usernames. Oh my god, why did I do that? Uh, this way, what I always do, 100% what I do, is if I'm trying to figure out who somebody is, I will first copy their profile name, throw it into Google, see what comes up. Sometimes it's old Zanga accounts. <laughs> Those are my favorite. You know Zanga, but you don't know now. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's because I had an old Zanga account. I found it a couple years back. Ooh, it was enlightening. Um, Make sure that the share and search results feature is off. On a lot of apps, specifically OkCupid, okay a lot of the ones online, if you put in somebody's profile name um, in the search bar, it, they will show up in Google. You have to turn that off. Make sure you turn that off in your privacy settings. Some people like it on because, I fuck if I know. <laughs> Some people just like it on, I don't know. Um, Make sure that your photos are ones that are set to private on Facebook. This is a really great way to keep your like photos from um, being searched back through. Here's what happens. When I talk to somebody on OkCupid or Tinder or wherever, and they say something, it's a bit suspect. And what they're saying doesn't match what they look like somehow. I will run their images through reverse image search. And I will do it without apology. <laughs> And I have found some interesting things, namely gay Russian porn. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like the, the, it's like a couple of guys will show up and I'll like push them through and it's like, um, it's like gay Russian porn and I have no idea how it came to that, but. Well, right, look at you go, look at you go to find the like gay Russian porn to use as your profile picture. Rock on, yes. Um, Yeah, so when you reverse image search, uh, the question was, when you search a photo on Google, it finds uh, that image on other sites. When you reverse image search something, it will find as close to that photo as possible, right? Um, so it'll find, like, if it's on Facebook, if it's a public photo, um, if it's on Instagram and your Instagram is set to public, um, all sorts of things. Like, it'll pull up wherever. And so sometimes if you, if you have photos on Facebook, I mean, frankly, if you have photos that you want to use specifically for dating sites and you don't want to put anywhere else, you can do that too. And that's completely acceptable for safety. Oh, I, I was just a quick question. Uh, do you, on your photo search, do you just use Google or do you use some, uh, some other app or whatever? So I use Google. I use um, Tinei. T-I-N-E-Y-E. Um, both of them are really great for searching, and I, I run through both of them. Um, if, it's, if it's something that I'm a bit concerned about, I'll, I'll run through both of them. Um, if you're going with somebody, going out with somebody, let a friend know where and when you're going, and consider establishing a code word in case of emergencies. So what I had for my friend was, um, was red. That was our, that was our wor word. Um, it was red. And so... Um, I went on this date, it was terrifying, this guy was like horrible and I couldn't, there was no way for me to get out of it in a way that would have been like comfortable for anybody and would have made me feel safe. So I call my friend, I'm like, oh, hang on, she like, she called me while we were in the movie and I'm like, I just need to check in. She's got, you know, she's got uh, epilepsy. She like needs to be checked in on when she calls me, it's, it's dire. So I like pick up the phone, I was like, hey, what's going on? You know, I'm out and she was like, uh, yeah, I didn't call you. And I was like, oh, um, no, I don't know where I put that red sweater. 
um, why do you do you need it? And she was like, uh, sure, I need it because you need to take me to the hospital because seizure. Oh, okay, all right, I will be there as soon as possible. Oh, I'm so sorry, my best friend, she just, she has a seizure, she needs to go to the hospital, like, I need to bounce, I'm just, I like have to go. It was nice, bye. Um, and then I blocked his number uh, because I did not feel safe in that situation to be like, hey, I just didn't really feel like it clicked. Um, and so like, keep that in mind too when you worry about people ghosting on you. Sometimes they just don't feel safe enough to say, I'm not interested and walk away from that. It does suck though. It's really frustrating when people ghost on you, but yeah. So if they agree to meet up with you, but then they don't make concrete plans with you, well, they still can have conversations with you, but they don't make concrete plans. Um, sometimes it's a matter of feeling safe. Like, I, that's really it. We're meeting people off the internet. We are meeting people, everybody in here, I feel like, comes from an age where we know that meeting people off the internet is dangerous, right? Stranger danger, it's a bad thing. Be careful, be safe. People die on the internet, Rebecca. You have no idea. What if you meet somebody on Craigslist? Mom, I'm not dating on Craigslist. What if you do? <laughs> Mom, I'm not. <laughs> right? When it gets to that point, sometimes they just don't feel safe. They don't feel comfortable. They don't feel safe, you know, really bowing out of it. Um, and you can, at that point, bow out of it. If it's starting to frustrate you, you can say, hey, look, I, you know, I really like talking, but I feel like we need to um, have like a concrete time to meet up if we're gonna keep moving forward with this. And if they say, okay, well, I'm not interested, then you say, it's been really great talking to you. I wish you the best of luck. By the way, it's been really great talking to you. I wish you the best of luck. Or good luck in your search. Both are completely appropriate ways to respond to somebody who's been like, no, I'm not interested. They're appropriate. Those are appropriate ways. Um, if there are red flags, address them head on. Call somebody on their inconsistencies. If they say that they went to one school and then like, you know, two paragraphs later say that they went to a different school, but just double check with them. Be like, oh, I thought you said you went here and then see what happens from there. If there's a red flag, if you are feeling uncomfortable, if something in the back of your brain just says, ah, this isn't right, don't do it. Don't do it, just walk away. Yeah. Um, if it fails, you can search for their information uh, using their like username, reverse image search their photos, that sort of thing. Try and identify that they're like a real life human being. Um, if they're not real, block and report. Block and report, block and report. D do that. Because what happens is if you're like, oh, this person's not real and I'm gonna just stop talking to them um, because they're a bot or because they're like a scammer or because they're like some like really terrifying person who's pretending to be somebody else, uh, you're subjecting the next person that they talk to to that same thing. So if you block and report, you're helping it get rid of, um, you're helping the sites and the, the communities that you're a part of get rid of the sleazy. Um, consider, consider setting up a Google Voice number. I use a Google Voice number for work. Um, so the phone number that's on my business cards goes to my phone. But it means that if somebody from this con takes my card and says, oh, I think I'm gonna drunk dial Becca and leave really gross messages. And I'm like, yeah, I, this is disgusting. I can block that number and never have to deal with it again. Like it never happened. And then um, for fuck's sake, do not meet in a private location. Please do not meet in a fucking like car park or um, or a warehouse or like some random dude's apartment. Like, do not do that. Oh my god! <laughs> be safe. Be safe. Look, <laughs> the Starbucks are fine, but don't meet in the bathroom. Meet like at the barista stand. Okay. Yes. Another good feature of Google Voice is you can save the uh, you can save the waveform with a little work, and, and then play it back for the entertainment of your friends and family. That is entirely too much work for me, but that's really cool to know. I'm gonna leave it in the back of my brain. 
One more question. Um, how many uh, bots or things like that have you encountered out there as far as uh, bots and those? I've been hearing a few people and my friends talk about them. But I'm not sure, like on dating sites, but I'm not sure just like, is there like a, are they that common out there? And is there, a, are they smart enough to where you go back and forth for a few times on a conversation before you realize it's a bot or what? Um. So when it comes to bots, it's actually, uh, interestingly enough, I don't get many bots because I have a vagina. And the bots typically tend to aim for, like, men. Uh, and so, um, like, cis men. Um, so there's not as many, there's not as many uh, bots out there for, for women, but you, you can go a couple of conversations where, like, you can go a couple rounds before you're like, ah, this feels... Something feels off. Something feels wrong. And then eventually it'll happen that like, she'll be like, oh, come to my cam site. And I'm like, girl, that's not how you pick up cam clients. What are you doing? Um, or something to that effect, right? Uh, so just keep an eye out for that. Like, like I said, if something feels wrong, it probably is wrong. Trust your instinct, trust your gut. If it just, trust it, you know? What's next? <gasps> oh. Ask questions. I'm done. That's really fast. Wait, wait. You need the you need the squishy microphone. That's actually a microphone. It's so. This weird. is a microphone. It's wow. a microphone. Awesome. Uh, you've talked about. Uh, you mentioned twin, uh, Tinder and OkCupid. I mean, do you have specific recommendations on what's good? Is Match OK? Is chemistry or whatever you know? So it. <laughs> It sort of depends on what you're looking for. I stick to OkCupid specifically because I am poly, I'm kinky, um, and it's like the most recognized. Um, but OkCupid is owned by Match. Um, I don't love Match.com. I think there's just too much work. <laughs> and they don't like really, Match.com and eHarmony seem to like not recognize the fact that like people can like both genders. They like seem to like, it's just, at a loss for them. They don't understand bisexuality. Right, what is that? You must pick a team. Um, and eHarmony is just like 18,000 questions that I simply can't be bothered to answer. Also, both of those are paid sites. So when I talk a lot, I talk a lot about sites that are, um, that are free to use. OkCupid, okay, Tinder, Plenty of Fish, although I hate Plenty of Fish so much. It's just. <sighs> so. In the world of online dating, Plenty of Fish is like, no, it's, it's like a sleazy back alley after it's rained and you can sort of like smell the sliminess. That's, that's Plenty of Fish. Now granted, like OkCupid's like that back alley where you're like, this looks a bit sketch, but like <laughs> Plenty of Fish is like, oh, this shit is slimy, gross. <laughs> um, but you can use Tinder. There's uh, Grinder. There's um, huh? I mean, all of these are they're all grody. And dating sites, it's gross. Like dating sites are gross. People are gross. <laughs> like they're just like obviously. Yeah, there are farmer matchup. Um, there's like. There's a site, uh, I have a friend of mine who um, has HIV and he, um, like, there's dating sites for people that have, like, um, STIs, like long-term HIV, HPV, um, HSV, that sort of thing, where they can go, it's automatically assumed that they have, um, like, a long-term virus and there's no, like, shame or stigma around it, which is actually a really cool site. <laughs> doesn't surprise me on the slightest, actually. <laughs> Dark humor is funny. I've only got one lung. I make jokes all the time about being breathless. Nobody likes it. <laughs> My partners all yell at me. Any other questions? Oh, jeepers. Uh, she was first, then he was, and then back. Um, any tips for staying engaged like I, <laughs> I I find myself overcome with apathy and ennui Girl. and just <laughs> like I look at a sea of faces and I just can't bring myself 
to engage or feel like I want to talk to anybody? <laughs> um, Are there any tips for, for staying optimistic, for staying engaged, for wanting to reach out? Right. <laughs> um, so as far as my recommendation would be to set aside some time, like like daily time or weekly time or whatever the hell you want to do monthly, I don't fucking care. Set aside some time that is just for this particular project. Like you're gonna get your ass drunk on some pink wine, it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna send like 40 fucking messages to people that you think are hot and that you kind of want to get in their pants and you're gonna see what happens. And then you can reply to them if they show up. If they don't, it's whatever. You just, you don't have to do it again until another week goes by. That's a good idea to keep it spaced out. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to burn out. <laughs> Um, I've been active on OkCupid for over than a year and I've tried Tinder for quite a bit following all the rules that you just described but I never actually got past uh, a short conversation uh, I had a few conversations that lasted several messages but never to the point of an actual meetup yeah and t Tinder I found really superficial E even the profiles uh, from, from the it's women. It's Tinder, yeah, it's designed um, to be superficial. <laughs> so I was wondering any tips besides normal etiquette so that you just mentioned? I don't have any direct tips for you. That is something, um, that's what I do for like my online dating coaching. It's like the thing that people pay me for is I sit down with you and I look at all your fucking messages and I go, oh, that's where you went wrong. That's what you did wrong, this is terrible. And I help you, I mean, I don't say that, that's mean. <laughs> but <laughs> but I help you to build out something and like get past that point and help to like carry the conversation on um, and to also identify like what you are looking for versus what you're putting out there because what happens a lot for a lot of people on their site on their profiles and things is they'll be looking for somebody who likes to Netflix and chill and instead what they're asking for on their profile is someone who likes brunch and yoga so <laughs> it you know it becomes this sort of thing where it's like is what you're saying meeting what you're actually looking for um, and like how to maintain that conversation and so forth. So there's, it's individual. <laughs> I, have, I have no 100% way to be like, this is absolutely what everybody can do to fix this situation. Um, but if you want to chat afterwards, we can. Uh, I have a severe cat allergy. And for some reason, every woman that I, seem to message who doesn't mention that she has cats seem to has about f have about four or five just hiding in their apartment um it it's really awkward when you have to grab an epi pen yeah after an introductory hug because well they're covered in cat air breathe um is there a polite way to put on your profile no seriously i'll die if i enter your apartment um, so you can actually put it there, uh, like in, you know, um, you can put in like things I'm good at. I'm good at quickly grabbing an EpiPen because you forgot to tell me there was a fucking cat. Like that sort of thing. Um, so you can like really make it cheeky and like funny. Um, but at the bottom, like when it's like, you know, what are you looking for? You can be like, I'm looking for a partner who doesn't have a cat. Right. Looking for dog people only. <laughs> perish the thought. Oh, I do love snakes. Snakes are lovely. Trouble. Trouble. This has got to be the dopest microphone ever. Okay, um, I, that's just a side note. Uh, hi. Um, I have the opposite of what she has. Like, she has too many people. I don't have enough people, and... The second thing is the people that I go on a date with, they are just garbage. So I, I have no idea what to do. I'm just basically giving up on online dating, really. So I hate to break it to you. I'm going to make some very quick assumptions about you as a person, all right? Please tell me if I'm wrong. You appear to be a black man. Is that accurate? Yep. OK. You are, unfortunately, at the very bottom end of the spectrum of people that get replies. In fact, for everybody else where it's like, you know, like a one out of 10, you're probably closer to like a one out of 15. Why? Hmm? Why? Because people are racist. 
Like that's why. Um, and OkCupid actually released a whole lot of data that they mined from profiles because they're like shit bags. Uh, <laughs> didn't tell anybody about it. They put it into a book, which is actually really it's a really good book. Um, but they they talked a lot about like the the um, the replies and how like they changed. White women are the most likely to get replies, um, which is unsurprising, I suppose, and black men are the least likely. So it like kind of goes on that spectrum. So for you, it requires putting in a little bit more work. It also might require finding sites that are a little bit more fine-tuned to the kind of people that you want. Like if you are looking for like, I don't know, somebody who is geeky, finding a site that is like a specific geek dating site, that's going to be a hell of a lot more useful to you than like wading the waters of OkCupid or Plenty of Fish and like hoping upon hope that you're going to find somebody, you know? This one and then this one and then I think we'll probably wrap. Yeah. Most most of your guide about how to write a message was focused on yeah, read the profile, pick out elements of the profile. But what on the web says that I don't have a profile? Like most people on Tinder have a completely empty profile. How right. do you start a message to those people? Um at that point you would try something to like pick out of their photos. Um, again, this is like the hard part when it's like yep. five different selfies on like the same background. It really isn't helpful to you. Um, but if you, if you can't, there is no shame on Tinder of swiping right because you find somebody hot. There's no yep. shame in that. Which is usually the case, but then how, once you see, okay, we both find each other hot. Then you ask a basic question of, you know, do you like pizza? Like, literally it's anything, okay. anything that could break the, any sort of conversation that could break the ice with that is what you're going to ask about that. Because you need to be able to start somewhere, but they ain't giving you anything. <laughs> so you need to start wherever you can get it. If they have interests on their profile, like you can see that. Sometimes it'll say like where they come from or what school they're at. You can be like, oh, I heard about, insert school here. You can call out the elephant and say, you didn't, you didn't leave anything for me to ask you about. But you can, you can. You can say something to the effect of, you know, I was going to write this really nice message about how awesome you were, but all I have is to see how awesome you look, so let me find out how awesome you are. What, what is your favorite Marvel any, movie? Yeah. Do you have any recommendations of, like, a list of possible questions to do that? Because... I mean, it is your basic things. Do you like pizza? Um, what is your favorite pizza topping? Do you like sushi? What's your favorite like food? What do you eat when you like what for comfort food? What's your comfort food? What is your guilty pleasure music? Like anything in that sort of vein? Google icebreaker, Google icebreaker questions. It's always a pretty solid. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so uh, I was joking about not knowing what a selfie is, but <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> um, I don't actually take many pictures of myself. So, what would what would your advice be to like go out and take more pictures or something? Like, how would you accomplish get your ass out there and take more pictures? Like, use your phone. Get a friend to take pictures. Get a friend to take pictures. I mean, this is so. This is the ideal event for somebody who doesn't take a lot of pictures of themselves and wants to get more pictures taken because you can take pictures with people. You can take pictures like next to art and things. Like you can take pictures in a lot of different spaces. <laughs> like you can you can do that. You can take pictures in these different spaces to kind of um, help you help you learn, you know, and help you um, help you learn to be comfortable with it. Um, so I think we have about reached the end of time, but I do want to cover a couple things real fast. Thing one, if you take one of my business cards and email me, I will send you a copy of these slides. If you take one of my business cards and uh, email me letting me know that you want to like hire me to fix your profile or to be a relationship coach or anything like that, you get like the low end of my sliding scale, which is $75 an hour for dating coaching and $50 for a complete rewrite of your OkCupid profile. The whole damn thing. So, um, and then I will also, if you take the thing and email me and say, hey, I'm from DragonCon, tell me about this thing. I will go over and look at your profiles and be like, hey, here's some like quick things I need to fix, that you could fix without like, just totally for free. And also, 
I can neither confirm nor deny the existence of some really, really awesome pins. But if you were to find me somewhere where I could confirm or deny the existence of said pins, I would potentially tell you that they are uh, $3 each or two for five. Just saying. Can't tell you that. Neither confirm nor deny. Do you guys have fun? Yeah. Thank you. Don't clap, it's fine, whatever, I see how it is. <laughs>